Hey y'all, how y'all doing? Are you willing and obedient? Are you willing to be obedient? If you want to eat the good of the land. Time to turn, guys. But let me break this down. It's out of Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. This is, this is how it happens for me, guys. I got the message from the Lord in prayer. And then he said, go to Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. And if you read 2, I think 2, it said the children of disobedience. The spirit is upon them with the children of disobedience. We were once disobedient, guys. <clears throat> I'm just going to put this out there, guys, okay? I didn't, so you can get this as a backdrop, okay? 1980 is when I got saved and spent almost seven years in an all black church, North Dallas. White wasn't in. The walls were white, and I was white. I remember once in a while somebody white would come in, but pretty much no. I didn't think I had pride. That was just one of my humbling experiences, and there's many in there. I thought, you know, I, I thought that ship had sailed. And so I'm just gonna give you a little bit of backdrop. Right now I'm kind of reeling from some things. I was in, God had given me a plan. And the willing part was, I was willing to a point, but then my will got in the way. I'm not pride of life. I'm still reeling from it, guys, okay? I'm just a working stiff like everybody else. I'm not a millionaire, a billionaire. I'm just going to throw this out there, guys. It was a $300,000 wonder. Some stuff that should have been... A, lo a loss turned into a loss, should have been a profit. Some of it should have been, but it was just, it was a mess, guys. I'm still reeling from it. So forgiveness had to be in there. Hurt a lot of people, too, myself included. Other people hurt me. Some, you know, man, I wanted revenge. Oh, man, it's a mess. Because of the pride of life. I don't think I had it. Because I wasn't willing to follow his will. In that area it was a I'm still doing it great plan awesome and God's performing taking and turning it around as we speak but it's still brutal and ugly and very painful and hurts I wasn't willing or obedient you can't you, this this is where I'm going with this if you're not willing you're not going to be obedient. And I'm not talking about this crazy obedience that the world has portrayed right now. You name it, the shots, or pick one. Masks, whatever. Been in the church a long time, guys. <clears throat> People try to beat you to death with the Bible so they can get, get over on you some, honestly. <clears throat> I, you have to be willing. It's this better than mentality that's out there throughout the land, throughout the churches. Even the word ministry, it, what is the end part of it? Ministry, T-R-Y, dry, all right? Anyhow, it's about self, a lot of it's self. Pride, ego. I'm a prophet, I'm an apostle. I said, God showed me this, God showed me that. Man, I, I've got a really good, he's a pretty solid guy. And I think his heart's really good, but we've talked. He's like, God doesn't talk to people like that. I don't know, down by the creek and blah, blah, blah. Well, he just did this message with me. He does this all the time, but he wants to do the same with you. Because it's a relationship. 
Oh, I'm not making this up, guys. Go back to the Garden of Eden. Everything was set before him. What did he want? What was his will? To just have some, some friends to talk to, come down in the cool of the day, give him some direction, show him some love, guidance. He already did. Everything was there. They weren't willing to be obedient to the one thing they asked them to do, not to do. I'm just saying, guys, we're not willing. We're not willing to humble ourselves. We're not willing to turn. I wasn't. I've been journeying the, I've been walking with the Lord for 40 years. Have I done it all right all the time? No. I've been a Pentecostal as a preacher, 10 years. Holiness, some as a preacher, 10 years. Backslidden. Prodigal son for years. Been in charismatic churches some that been in some churches that so tight this would have sent me straight to hell and some that were so loose you lost as a goose in high grass that's not i'm not saying this out of pride guys i'm saying that my, this journey's been cool in a lot of respects and hard in a lot of respects but this last one man i was like i was like lord i didn't catch this and then just, he told me very bluntly and very loudly, it's not about the money. It was about the sin, the pride. There's another the, the scripture is um, Isaiah 119. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. The willing part, guys, is what we got to get out of our will and his will. What does the Bible say? Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who thought not robbery to be equal with God, but took on the form of a bondservant even unto death. Read that in some depth, guys. He was the son of God. Nevertheless, he's on the cross dying. Nevertheless, your will, not mine. Willing. And then we become obedient. And it's not to be a slave like the world wants us to be and some of the churches want us to be. You'd be assessed. You got out of a servant's heart. Sorry, I don't know if that's my car. Nope. Sorry for the interruption. Obedient. Some of them just want you to be obedient because so that they can get something out of you. Mostly their, their money, but your time and your efforts and just crazy stuff. It's not about that, guys. I've got some really good, pretty solid Christian friends, but they drifted off into this surreal stage moment stuff. Huge stage and 300,000 people committed their life to Christ. That's awesome and great, but you don't need a, don't need a tally card. What are you doing in your prayer closet? What are you doing when nobody sees you? What are you doing when you're at, mine happens to be one of the major convenience stores and for whatever reason, I don't go there that often, but when I do to get a Diet Coke or something, which is way too high, so I kind of don't, but I still do sometimes, occasionally stop there for different things. There's always a homeless guy or gal sitting there. You can tell, you can see it in their face. They're looking, they're kind of looking away, kind of looking at you and just like a lost, lost puppy dog or a lost soul. Hungry. I always feed him, but what I do is I say, you know, do you know Jesus loves you? What do you want to eat? And then I come out and I usually get a chance to minister to him, most of them. Some of them bold, but some of them don't. I'm not saying that to say that I'm somebody. When I, go back to what I, the story I said about the Garden of Eden. He wants to talk to his people, but that scripture that says, for the love of many, is wax cold. I, it's a message I got out. Um, I forget the scripture. Sorry. You know which one I'm talking about, though. Because of iniquity, the love of men is going to wax cold. Well, guess what? What did Jesus say a lot? Quite a bit. And it would seem to be in parable, parables, but it wasn't. At the end of a lot of his 
sayings, it was like, he that had an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. We got these ears, but they're carnal, and we're not using them in the spiritual realm. And the wax that's in them is sin. So he can't enter in. Because we're not listening. We're not willing to be obedient. We're not willing We want this surreal moment. America the Great, da da da. Guys, we're a captive nation right now. Oh no, oh, oh no, we're this great and God we trust nation on the back of the dollar bill. Go walk in the wrong state. New York will be one of them. Go walk out and try to get a hamburger or to the grocery store. The great state of New York, the great state, great, we're a captive land, guys, or one disease. And now they're creating more. Honestly, why is this Dr. Fossey guy even still around and in charge? Because of sin. He's a Yahoo. But really said what should be done with him, you know? It's past, past traitor and tree treason. And he's destroyed the world, but it wasn't just him. There was more. I'm not into this conspiracy theory stuff, guys, either. Into the reality and the spirit of discernment. If we're not willing, then we're not going to be obedient. Then we're not going to eat the good of the land. And that's where we're at, guys. We're not willing to to to, to say. You know, I'm, I can say this with full authority, guys, because I'm going through it right now. It's, a, it's, it's humbling to tell people that you got sin in your life. Mine was pride. Some people's pornography, some people's whatever, different things. We all got them. It's humbling, humiliating to a point. It's like, man, hurtful. Like I said, I'm still reeling from some of that, but I still have to do the these messages too, because it's like, okay, Lord, I'm praying every day, all the time about this stuff. That's why, you know, I even questioned God a little mad at him, honestly. I was like, man, God, why didn't you show me this? When I had an opportunity to fix this stuff, you know what he told me? Look at the children of Israel when it rained manna down from heaven and told them not to stack it up. It was gonna spoil. Long, you know, one day I'm gonna give you the whole journey, this whole journey, but right now I'm still, you know, still on the side of the road with a couple of flat tires. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's a tow truck coming. I already made the call. Okay, I'm, just, I'm still here. God's still on the throne. Jesus' grace is still sufficient. I just wasn't willing to do it his way. It had to be it was Stevie's way. And ouch, does it hurt, to say the least. Not not just physical, emo not just emotional, not spiritual too, and just all oh, the, pe the people that I was trying to help that I hurt, several of them. I was like, man, Lord, I was trying to help these people. Some of them, and some of them were people that I really loved too, and it was like, man. Some of them were just people that I just had met, but I had known a while. It it's got really ugly, complicated, quick, because of the flesh and the lust and the pride of life. Because I had already been through a, a, a lot of different, you know, battles. And so I was like, okay, look what God did. Oh, man. Yeah, look what God did. He wants to set us free, guys. Are you willing? Or is it your will? Are you going to do what he tells you to do? Or do you got deaf ears, you close it off, and you know, talk to the hand, I'm not listening. Blah, blah, blah. 
Pick one. If you listen to most of my messages, it's generally all about the, one of the main themes of it is the direction. Because God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word better be your source. That's all I'm telling you guys. I'm not saying you have to agree with me, listen to me. You know, just get to Him. You hear this all the time. Sometimes people say, you know, hey, how's it going? Well, I'm just trying to get through the day. And, you know, or people at work and it's just trying to get through, pass, you know. He doesn't want us to get through it. He wants to get to it. Us to the cross and his blood that was sufficient. And he wants to talk to his people. Are you willing? Sometimes it's, you know, I've got, some, you know, sometimes it's through the word. People, some, I've got some friends, man, they really get into some depth in the word. And it was almost a little bit like jealous, honestly. I was like, man, God, where are they, you know? But that's not me. But it might be in prayer. It could be a supplication. It could be in other people. You know, there's many, many avenues that God, that's why he has us all different, but that he approaches you. But are you listening? Are your ears full of wax and sin? Because sin's in. And the Holy Ghost is out. Because you don't want the direction. He said he'd send a comforter that would lead God and direct us to all truths. A lot of us aren't listening. 40 years for me, and pride got in the way. Didn't think I had it. Thought that ship had sailed a long time ago, guys. If you knew some of the things the Lord had done for me and showed me and taught me and just be like, what? You know, that shouldn't even exist. But it did. Because that $300,000 blunder, that's a lot of cash, guys. A lot of screw-ups and mistakes. Like I said, I'm, you know, I don't have two flat tires. I got four flat tires. I don't even know if there's tires in the car anymore. But anyhow, but there's a tow truck coming, so we'll figure it out. But I had to step back and and not do, but just be alone with the Lord and do what He told me to do. It wasn't me doing it. It was him. I just It's been a couple months at least, honestly. <clears throat> and it's been ex extremely testing at best. It's kind of like, I'm going to end with this. It's kind of like, <clears throat> and some of y'all, I mean, probably remember that submarine called the Trias or whatever it was that went down to the bottom of the deepest part of the ocean <clears throat> back in the 70s, I think. And uh, <clears throat> kind of where I, where I feel like I'm at right now, it's like, man, Lord, I'm at the bottom of this, this deepest part of the ocean, and the, the weight's crushing me, can't breathe. And he's like, oh, by the way, I want you to you know, run a marathon, 25-mile marathon. Okay. <laughs> man. Am I willing? Not me, guys. I'm not trying to boost and bolster me up and, you know, like I'm a Navy SEAL guy or something. I'm not trying to do that in the Holy Ghost. I'm not. I've always been pretty humble, except for I had that spirit of pride somewhere in there buried and I didn't know it. And I, I, I kind of did and I kind of didn't, mostly didn't, because it had been buried so well. I wasn't willing to let it go. I cared more about our souls than the money, the stuff, the politics. Oh yeah, the politics. I cared more about who's in charge. He cares more about our soul and where we're going to spend eternity. He wants us back to talk with us in the cool of the day. It's kind of cool today. I'm on Dallas, and so it's a little cool today, but then you get the metaphor. He wants his, his people back. So maybe you should clean up your ears a little bit. Me too.
I, this, this is not this is not you versus me and that's one of my messages is out of first Peter there's no secret revelation <clears throat> we all can get it guys I don't care if you're the guy that lives under the outhouse in the outhouse penthouse or the white house or any house or no house or lady or woman or child he wants to talk with his people <clears throat> why do you think this virus took off like it did nobody was listening you weren't as a church I'm gonna end with this 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 awake garbage moment we should have never been asleep sleep at the wheel now everybody's like, you know, they turned it and, you know, tried to make a Shazam moment out of it. That's what I'm saying, guys. It's a lot of, a lot of what we do, people aren't even going to see. God is, though. Time to be willing and quit trying to be something we're not. Never were intended to do. It's a trick of the enemy. Lies from the devil. Where did this pride come from? Satan. <clears throat> we were a proud nation. Our economy strong. And, you know, the current administration has destroyed it. The other one saved it. No. Not even anywhere close to the truth. You know it. <clears throat> We're here by the grace of God. And until we get a grasp on that. And we're willing to be obedient. To come to that place of obedience. To do his will. Not our will. His way, not our way. We're not going to eat the good of the land. Like I said right now, you know, I know uh, people are going to think I'm anti-American or whatever. I'm anti-sin. And we've got a big dose of it in the pride area, guys, for one. Traditionalism. Better than. Man, it's real prevalent in this country, guys. In our land. In the justice system. In the courts in the military in the politics and everything you don't think so okay what do we do if we you know I'm, i gave this guy I had to post it but i gave this guy a king size mattress box spring and he showed up to pick it up and he hit a bar truck he was muslim we just got to talking and he said, he said, you know, I told him, I said, man, the church is off on just, you know, how they treat people. He said, yeah, he said, imagine if you were in, you know, kind of like in my shoes in my country, and uh, the bombs started dropping here right while we were standing there. He said, what if bombs started dropping here and killing people yeah. and destroying their, their land, your land? He said, and then, and then you find out somebody thousands of miles away said, oh, we did it because, you know, Guys and gals, are you willing and obedient? Not a slave, but a son of the Most High God. But you got to be willing to let him be in charge and not us. Love you guys. Missed you. Um, tune in, share it, whatever. Whatever God's telling you to do. Love you.